So good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome you all on behalf of the Cyprus High Commission to this roundtable discussion, which is actually more of a square grid uh, discussion these days. So my name is Marius Psaras. I am the Cultural Counselor of the Cyprus High Commission and Project Coordinator of Together Apart Going New Places, an online exhibition organized by the Cultural Section of Cyprus High Commission and sponsored by the Cultural Services of Cyprus. Excellently curated by performance the designer Marina Hachiluka, the online exhibition features new, new work by seven Cypriot artists and can be visited now on culturalchc.co.uk slash together apart. That is culturalchc.co.uk slash together apart up until the end of June. Um, today's Zoom discussion is the second of two satellite events complementing the exhibition and invites academics and art professionals from Cyprus, the UK and China to exchange views and explore changes to public space and public art in the time of Corona. And it also coincides with the World Day for Culture, Diversity, Dialogue and Development which is today. So I would like to welcome on our panel Elada Evangelou, Chang Gao and Socrates Radis and thank them for kindly accepting our invitation to join us in this conversation this evening. Unfortunately, Dr. Catherine Machioletti uh, could not be with us this evening. Now, before handing over to Marina Hajiluka, who's gonna properly introduce our guests and the topic of today's discussion, I would like to um, also welcome our audience here on Zoom and on Facebook and let, let them know that we happily invite their own contributions and questions to the discussion using the Q&A mode on Zoom or the comments section on Facebook. On to you, Marina. You, you have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, thank you, Marios. Um, on my behalf, I would also like to thank both you, Marie, and the CHC for giving me this opportunity to run and curate this great project. Um, on today's roundtable discussion, we will be looking, as Mario said, at the future of public spaces and public art, how we see them or imagine them in the post-pandemic era. Um, and with, with us on the panel, we have four academics and four practitioners from um, Cyprus and the UK. Um, Dr. Elada Evangelou, who is a dramaturg and the artistic director of the Buffer Fringe Festival in Cyprus. Uh, Chang Gao, uh, who is a PhD candidate at the RCA, um, as, and a sculptor and a public art researcher. And Dr. Socrates Stratis. Um, Stratis is an architect, urbanist, and activist for the urban commons and an associate professor at the University of Cyprus. Um, for today's session, we have prepared a set of four questions on which we will invite our panelists to make a five minute provocation on all, of, on all or a chosen question. But first, I would briefly like to clarify to our audience what, what we mean by public space and public art. Um, so a public space is a place that is generally, generally open and accessible to the public. By, by this, we usually mean the roads, the pavements, squares, parks and be beaches. Um, Why piazzas and, um, and malls, for example, tend to be considered that as public spaces. We should keep in mind also that the, they are privately owned and controlled. Um, and that's just um, a little note. Um, and a public art now is, a, is any kind of art that is usually um, that is visually and f physically accessible to the public. It is performed or installed in the public sphere and quite often is funded by a public organization. Now, um, on to our four questions. We would like to ask our panelists to respond to how is the city's use changing and by extend its public spaces and how do they, how 
temporary or how permanent do they think that these cha changes will be? Um, how do, do they understand public arts and what are the new meanings assigned uh, to the concept during, during and after the pandemic? And how can public art engage with the audience in the post-pandemic era? For example, how can we choreograph social distancing? Um, and um, I will now pass on the floor to Elada, who I know is preparing for a public festival due to take place this October, um, and would really like to hear her thoughts on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Maria, to the High Commission and to Marina for the invitation. It's great to be here among such, such a great company. Um, so yes, your questions are actually very much to the point of a lot of the things that we were thinking in relation to, uh, to the Buffer Fringe Festival. Um, also in relation to my own practice um, as, a, as a dramaturg. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna set things up a little bit uh, from my perspective, because I think that um, how the performing arts relate to public space might be a slightly different from other um, art forms. So I just wanted to set it up a little bit. So what happens when there's a, um, a performance or some sort of a, um, a performative manifestation in a public space? So the first thing that happens is that um, this convention of, which is rather, well, okay, not modern convention, but um, it's like, let's just say it's a usual convention of putting uh, theatrical performances in theatrical spaces um, is, you know, uh, does not exist once you put it in an, in an outside space. So what does this do? That there's a lot of conventions of, of theater conventions that are immediately that immediately disappear. Like for example, a simple simple example would be what do the audience do? The audience no longer needs to just sit there and discipline themselves and when the lights come up, clap, right? Um, so the audience can move around. Um, so that's just one example. We no longer need artificial lights. We can have other types of lights. We can we can play with uh, we can play with different um, with the different meanings of space, and this brings me a little bit closer to um, to my own practice. So, um, and to the practice of, of the Buffer Fringe Festival. So, the Buffer Fringe Performing Arts Festival, for those who don't know, um, takes place not always, but its home is the buffer zone of Cyprus, um, and it's a it's a space between the the north and the south part of the island. Um, which is literally in the middle, um, and it's produced by the Hunk Corporation. You can Google all of these. Uh, and um, it's, this year, it's the seventh edition. So the, the festival started, and every year we kind of face this question of, okay, so we are doing um, a performing arts festival, sometime first year and last year, in a public space, in a specific public place, what does that mean for the performances themselves? And for the buffer for the buffer zone, it basically means that you are playing, you are performing in a space that is very, very much loaded with with um, with other narratives. These narratives relate to things like memory. In a, well, for sure, memory because you know if it's a space that's been used by other people in the past, there would definitely be narratives of those that have used it. But in the in the specific case of the of the Lidra Palace buffer zone. There's also quite a lot of trauma that's associated. Um, in the last 45 years, that space has been used for so many things that are um, related to war, conflict, um, internal displacement, um, you know, exchange of prisoners. It's a very, very loaded space. So immediately, once you place public performance art in that space, um, it becomes a layered performative act. It is no longer just presenting an act uh, performing a uh, performative act in a space, in a generic theater, right? Um, so this is this is where the the Buffer Fringe Festival is situated, uh, both in the in the actual and the symbolic. Uh, and just to talk a little bit about um, what what are what is happening now in relation to the pandemic, uh, just so I kind of go to to the last two questions that you addressed, Marina. Um, so this year, uh, the 2020 festival was obviously faced with the possibility that uh, we would not be able to A, meet. Um, so 
from north to south, from south to north. So that would have basically eradicated the possibility for what we call bicommunal or multi-communal uh, performances and collaborations. Uh, and the second thing is that we would not be able to meet period. So if, the, if we would not be able to host international artists, we would not be able to uh, rehearse, which is something, it's a need that has become apparent to so many performance artists is that we can't touch each other. So what's going to happen now? These are, you know, immediately a mountain, um, which is the kind of the physical distancing um, rises and you don't really know what to do. So the solution that we gave and kind of this has to do with um, thinking of the curation of a festival outside the box of a specific time frame and a specific um, specific action is to uh, invest in process-based work um, and to ask the artists to give us um, proposals that within them incorporated this idea of documenting and presenting online their process. So once a week we're asking artists to uh, send us a video, a photo blog, a text, something that will walk us through their process. I'm also going to um, talk about one challenge, which is what is this new audience that's going to uh, follow this festival? So our public art, which is now uh, presented online, hopefully at the end of November, beginning of December, it will also be presented offline in an actual festival. But what is this new audience that will walk with us in this process? Um, that's it. A few thoughts from me. I hope I haven't taken up too much time. Thank you. Thank you, Lada. Um, that's, uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, very interesting. I'm just going to read, I'm, I'm, I'm going to quickly jump onto the next um, uh, speaker and then we'll sort of try and sum up at the end. Um, I'm going to jump into Chang, um, who's um, also working in, in, in public art. Uh, um, her research may be in London, but I know that a lot of her work happens in China or she looks at a lot of work um, uh, in China. So yeah, um, thank you, Chang. You have to unmute your. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so oh, sorry. Uh, I just start again because it's a um, yeah. Thank you very very much for Marina's introduction, and uh, I'm very uh, pleased to my great honor to attend this uh, discussion. Um, you know, I'm a PhD candidate from a Central uh, like a art local college of art, but I also as an establisher and a director of the. Uh, Social Innovation of uh, Research Lab at the Central Academy of Fine Art in China. As Marina introduced, like my topic is also situating between both China and Europe. You know, the pandemic outbreak first started from China. And although I wasn't in China, like physically in person, but I actually mentally or psychologically felt or experienced a lot of kind of panic situation. So after the Virus actually arrived in London or like in, in Europe. I actually more mentally prepared for the danger of the virus and uh, kind of already purchased the N95 facial mask or alcohol or disposable kind of uh, gloves for the preparation of, of, of how to handle this kind of uh, scenario. So I think this is also the meaning for holding a discussion today, you know, for to know what to do next to facing a unknowable kind of shift or kind of a changeable uh, moment of the public, both public art and public space. Uh, it's always kind of valuable to discuss about. Mm, come back to the topic of uh, public art and public space, you know. I don't know what other kind of uh, environment because I, at the moment, I felt the most debatable kind of uh, topic is more about how to face the usage of uh, digital technology and whether the production of uh, public art uses uh, digital technology as a way to handle such a situation. I think, in my opinion, I feel both of them are not excluding with each other. Uh, the Zoom 
platform, I mean, wasn't invented by the coronavirus, but the, the combination of both physical material kind of environment as well as the digital um, technology combined together is a way out to handle current situation as well as a post pandemic era. And um, I just take an um, example of my own exhibition as an um, uh, uh, as an exa example, I mean, my uh, my double, double solo exhibition, Public Intimacy, was just exhibited one week before the lockdown in UK. And uh, although it was physically exhibited in a real kind of a gallery space at the Royal College of Art, but the uh, uh, technology that I used is like uh, using hardware sensors, monitors, and also uh, Arduino controllers. Uh, hologram installation, but also using traditional materials like plaster or rubber, feather, cruising, and digital prints. I come back to the exhibition like Mario and uh, uh, Marina and Mario's like um, created. I mean, the exhibition like together art uh, apart, going new places. Combine compared to other exhibitions that have been simply cancelled or postponed. I think. Presenting them digitally in online is always better than than simply canceling. Um, so I also introduced another piece of work called uh, "The Chaos Companion," and he is a, a British artist. Uh, I mean, uh, based in London, and he just invent a uh, kind of AR art uh, sculpture and uh, invite the audience or participant to showcase this piece of work in different background such as public space or private space. And I think such kind of work just opens up the multiplicity of spaces. And to discuss the ambiguity between public space and private space, how the production of artwork changed the circulation of artwork in, within the art market. And uh, this work also inspired me to think about the ratio that uh, just exhibited in Central Academy of Fine Art where I just worked before, and uh, their degree show just showcase started yesterday. And they put their like work, like in a matter sculpture or painting, within a virtual reality kind of environment. And uh, within one day, they just received like 53,000 like uh, visiting within one day. So I, I just feel like in a such scenario, of the lockdown, I mean, it's not a big, uh, it's not a bad outcome for in terms of the public electricity. And um, it also reminded me of the uh, Great Britain Museum. They also invited the audience to uh, virtually engage with the three dimensional kind of art appreciation, as well as Tate Modern, the immersion rooms. I know there are not much time left for my presentation today, but I would like to just end up my, my idea for one piece of work using the te both technology as, as a way of creating public art. And although the lockdown will finish soon and the social distancing kind of policy will also somehow stop, but in a post pandemic era, the combination of both technology and in the real world is a way out for solving this issue. It's just 40 seconds. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Chang. Um, and now we'll move on to Socrates. Um, thank you, Socrates. Thank you. Well, uh, hi, everybody. Um, thanks a lot for the invitation, first of all. And I'm excited to see that you are 
not discouraged by the sanitary crisis to this continue your creative activities. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I'm overwhelmed of what's going on and I'm just struggling to keep my uh, intellectual sanity in order. So I'm, I'm going to shift and discuss about your, answer your questions by putting kind of additional questions. And I will uh, bring forward four, four points. And these points uh, are issues that we need to problematize to um, critically address probably by uh, including artistic practices, but also critical special practices and many others who want to deal with what's going on. So the first point is, um, it's about COVID-19 sanitary crisis as an event. And uh, I think we, such kind of events create a before and an after and uh, an in-between. And we need to be careful about uh, the mental imaginary that we are uh, creating with this kind of timeline disruption. Uh, because on one hand, it can be, I mean, it's for sure a catalyst for change. However, it can go either way. So we, for the better or for the worst. And uh, so we need to just have that in mind. In addition, there are cultural agents who explicitly refuse to link this in-between uh, condition with uh, uh, creativity. They just don't want to do that. There was, for example, an interview of a director in a French news, newspaper like the other day. But if we want to use the crisis as a catalyst uh, for change for the better, because I think that's what we are discussing and how art can do that, I think first we need to confront kind of the causes of social injustice and climate change and to understand that, I mean, this is kind of an overall problem that is not going to change and uh, uh, we need to just watch out of that. Second point, we should not look at COVID-19 sanitary crisis as a unique event, but rather as one of these many crises that occurred in, uh, in humanity, in human history, and many others that are coming. So if we do that, if we put uh, this crisis together with uh, kind of the, the sum of the crisis, uh, then we can follow how governing regimes profit from crisis to exercise control, both on individual and, and social uh, bodies. And, uh, and, and that's where we see biopolitics and there's so many actually written on this. Now, the states of exceptions that are established, that they are normalized and that they are being tolerated by society, it's another challenge, I think, for public art. Third point, during the confinement and, and all this social distancing that we're discussing and all over the world, and we see that the communication technology becomes a protagonist. I mean, that's what we're actually doing now. And at the same time, it's really useful as, uh, I mean, the, the two colleagues discussed already and as uh, a lot of discussion is going on. But, um, and, and, and they become more sophisticated. These digital encounters, they're really more sophisticated. We see upgrades of this program. However, when we tend to replace our physical encounters and activities with digital ones, we risk to fall into the same trap as our grand grandfathers, grandparents fell, uh, like uh, with the Industrial Revolution. And then there, that technology can solve all our problems. And that faith produced uh, a lot of distractions. So we need to be aware of that. Then, so how can public art deal with this or bring this uh, out? I think it's uh, important. So we, we see, I mean, the discussion about what is going to happen after uh, the, um, the crisis. I mean, we see how this communication technology increases control and that can go either way too. It can go for totalitarian regimes. It can go for... Uh, 
democratic kind of uh, emancipation. What we don't really discuss very often is that this process of production of such technology, like our iPhones, smart iPhones, our iPads, our computers, where are they produced? Like the process of producing them generates additional social inequality and injustice in other countries. So by praising digital technology, we need to be critical about that as well. Fourth point. So I'm just discussing about some, ish, some paradoxes at the end of the day that uh, we need to at least make explicit and discuss. So, so the fourth point is about uh, public-private binary versus uh, commons. We, we've seen how private and public spheres are shattered during this crisis. And um, these confinement measures that they're both generating new discussion about what is public, what is not public, what is private, and all this. But do we really need to limit ourselves within this binary, public-private? And um, if we ask ourselves why public space, I think Marina introduced uh, this issue in the beginning, and where public space, I think then we reach out to the notion of the commons. And um, if we, like why public space? Because we need to take care of the possibility for change of the actual status quo. And public space with free accessibility. I mean, again, you touched in the beginning, that's a big discussion. They, they cater for such a kind of cause. Public space, it's crucial to meet the other, to meet people that are not like us. I think we are similar in this discussion. To exchange with the other. So that's another debate about public space. And where public space, I think public space can be anywhere where we can uh, generate change. And um, then if we claim this uh, kind of role of, I mean, there's a debate about the commons that goes beyond this public-private uh, discussion. And I think it's very important to put that into discussion, like uh, what is, how, is, what is our role in, co-managing our future, uh, both in terms of the urban environment and the natural resources. We see a lot of solidarity movements coming out in this uh, kind of pandemic era. So these are the four points. Now, about artistic practices and cultural agents, I think they need to ask about their critical role vis-a-vis -vis these four points. And they need to continue to be agents of uh, making things sensible and bringing out to the public debate. So, I mean, this is an exercise we're doing now. And uh, I mean, we need to resist to this process of normalization of, uh, of crisis. And I think what is crucial is to develop processes that can contribute to the construction of democratic ways of dealing with the crisis to come. Unfortunately, we know that because of the climate change, there are going to be a lot more. So are we, and we, uh, what is really uh, important for the crisis, the, the COVID-19 crisis, is that we've seen how issues of freedom are reduced, how in the name of safety, democratic institutions are frozen. And, and there, there's a, a major challenge for art for artistic practices for cultural agents in, in general. So there, I would just stop here and just uh, have all these, these issues for discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Sokadi. Wow, uh, yeah. So um, I'm just gonna, I guess I'm gonna try and pair a few things that um, all three of you touched on and um, try and take further the, the discussion. Um, First of all, uh, as you said, why public space and where public space? Um, it's really interesting that um, it, Elada touched on that as well I, in the in the need to meet in order to have to to be able to 
to produce um, to produce a discussion through the festival, to produce um, art a performance through the festival, and 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 also um, take on the 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 principles I guess of the festival, which is the the bicommunality and 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 the multicommunality and the the physical meeting together. But, uh, and that's also what, what public space does in a way that uh, the, it gives us the ability to come together, as, so as Socrates said, and exchange views, uh, not necessarily always that we um, agree. It doesn't mean that we always agree within that public space, but that's how you have um, democracy. That's how um, new ideas are born. Um, and then uh, touching on onto um, the where public space, as Socrates said, said is that wherever this is possible, that so that somebody could argue that this could be it, it could be the the, the pub, what we call public sphere. So it could be in online. Um, so what we're doing now, this is a public event and it's accessible to everyone. But then you don't have the physicality. So that's. Again, when um, what Chang said comes in, um, so you have the all the AI technologies that um, allow us to have access to public art and to have access to um, it could possibly have access to other cities as well. And that also reminds me of of Natalie Natalie's project that uh, she's presenting in the exhibition, the Hyperplaner, which is um, again. A in a way a critique on, on on how you can travel through your phone um but also it's a, it's a it for me it raises it always raises the question of the the physical presence and how if we limit ourselves or in a way i think that's it goes back to what socrates said the balance um if we limit ourselves only to technology then you lose the physicality you lose the exchange in a way uh, within the public space and then public spaces die. Um, I was today, this just this morning, I saw um, a poster um, that this Canadian design company um, shared online and it was saying the public sp space is dead, long live public space. So again, it's a critique on how um, all this is changing. So again, I'm going to open it up to you. I, I'm, I'm just going to remind our audience that they can at this point, they um, can uh, enter their provocations or enter um, 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 share their thoughts in the discussion through the Q and A uh, section on Zoom and also on the comment section um, and Facebook. It doesn't have to be just questions; they can um, intervene in the in the discussion. I'm gonna um, just to say that I'm I'm unmuting everyone um, um, from the panel. Um, so that you can just jump in um, and yeah. Um, I would like to also um, yes, ask a, a couple of questions or it's just, it might just be comments, not necessarily questions. Um, I, I really enjoyed Elada's presentation of, of, of the festival as a way to re-narrate a space that was very much uh, characterized uh, by conflict and uh, war. So it's, it's, it's a way to give it a, a, a new dimension, which is um, um, pro-peace and true culture. And I was wondering how can we re-narrate a space without the space anymore? Because we now, in, it is my understanding that um, uh, leading, up, leading up to the festival, ideally to be held in public spaces in November, you're, you're currently uh, going through this um, process of um, collaborating online. If, I understood correctly. Um, so perhaps the symbolisms are still there. Maybe it, not all is lost, uh, but you, you, you can tell us better about that. Also, um, I, I really liked what Chang has said about, about 
um, some positive uh, things that might come out of this digital, um, uh, of, of the use of digital technology and the opening up of culture uh, to bigger audiences and previously un unforeseen encounters and collaborations um, and uh, I, I was I was wondering whether um, there are any any more examples that you could tell us Chang and also um, since you have a knowledge of the Chinese experience I, I recently come across a video uh, about Wuhan where uh, theater spaces are are opening again um, with the audience using PPE and social distancing measures. But perhaps this is something that might be achievable in China. The question is, would such a thing be achievable in Cyprus or in the, in the UK? Um, and finally, um, what uh, Socrates said about um, coronavirus being um, and this situation uh, uh, being a way to to expose social injustices, to to also expose uh, um, the abuse of power by some governments around the world, and the creation of these states of exception. I, I was wondering how you understand uh, this phrase of states of exception. Are we talking? in Agamben's terms, uh, for example, or are we just talking about um, creating these temporary uh, measures uh, to contain the, the, the health crisis rather than um, creating new boundaries and enforcing new laws? Of course, we know that unfortunately this has already happened across uh, the globe. We don't want to make this political, though, because our focus uh, is still arts, uh, the arts world and culture, which, okay, we know that it's often political, but, <laughs> uh, but I think you know what I mean. Uh, and finally, um, I, I really like the idea of public spaces as spaces of chance encounters where dialogue, debate, and democracy happens. And, uh, and I think this is, uh, th these are uh, major ideas embedded in culture and cultural activity. Um, before, um, sorry, before everybody answers, I, I'd just like to um, attach in a way a question that uh, has been posed by one of our audience, uh, which really ties with um, your last question, Marie, um, um, it's by Andronikos Kallis, and he's saying, in the shade of global over surveillance, open spaces and human lives, how can we, how can art prevent a new culture of sterile open spaces, uh, of diminished engagement? How um, do you think public spaces are already redefined, and how can art reverse the potential of surrendering our public rights in the fear of of the proximity of our bodies. Um, so now on to you guys. Can I, uh, um, I will talk about the Buffer Fringe Festival that uh, Marius asked before. And, and because, and I, I would just, um, maybe that's a challenge for, for Elada as well. I think it's a great chance that uh, Buffer Zone it will not be as a physical protagonist of the, of the festival. Because in that case, the space itself is like, a, it's a manifestation, it's like a symptom, a symptom of a conflict. Therefore, sometimes it's so overwhelming that it doesn't allow us to address the, the, the causes of the conflict itself. Therefore, what I, what I, I would expect from, from this, uh, difficulty to come out is really to bypass the symptoms of the buffer zone and, and go directly to, to causes of, of creating conflict. So that's a, I, I see it as, a, as an advantage, as a challenge. Um, okay, 
So I, I think that's a pass in my uh, field and I'm fine with that <laughs> because I mean, one thing that we have been recognizing, well, at least since 2004 um, and then with the opening of the whole corporation, but even before, even when things would happen in Vila, for example, when there were intercommunal meetings, is how porous the, the, the buffer zone is, like truly how porous it is. Um, so this is something that we have as a given. I think that, you know, time has created so many uh, tiny, uh, and not so tiny, sometimes little holes, um, that now you're right. Now we have the challenge. Uh, and Maria, I, I completely see what you're saying, right? So that now we, we need to find ways to re-narrate. But to what, what is the division and what is it that uh, separates us and, you know, what all these layers of narratives and memory have done to our stories. But I think there are now other ways to narrate. So there are artists that are narrating um, through what, what, what their physical relationship is to division. So there are artists, for example, like kind of very plain examples that are dealing with uh, how do we queer uh, the, the buffer zone? You know, what does it mean to create alternative narr narratives through other means of critical analysis, right? And this is sometimes a very, very embodied experience such as query. Um, other ways is to, um, to start to consider um, the, uh, the, the space as an ecological space. And a lot, and a lot of artists through their uh, collaborations, so uh, performing artists with ecologists, with environmentalists, now see this space as uh, a, a space in danger, a uh, space in crisis. That is, a, it's a different type of narration uh, that can still be performed, that is still uh, performative, uh, than to have the conversation which is overtly political because art in general, and especially I think that the art that we are doing is political as long as it's not defined and is not stifled by the political. And that, I, that for me is one of, our, uh, one of our missions, to open up the narrative enough so that people uh, understand that they have the freedom to explore alternative um, entry points into this discussion uh, about what is this specific public space on the island of Cyprus, and this is not just in Cyprus. So people are exploring these in between public spaces. Okay, apart from the obvious Korea, Berlin, they've been doing it for, for decades, uh, but also uh, cities that are going through gentrification that are changing drastically, that previously uh, public spaces that were um, um, not slums, but that, that had another sense of belonging, uh, they belonged to other socioeconomic groups now have shifted. So these are other types of buffer zones. I think that Sogradis can speak uh, a lot more about that than, than that I can. It's just this conversation does not belong in post-conflict um, societies alone. Um, and it's, it's happening in, in all sorts of spaces and especially urban spaces, going back to your question, Marina, about what happens to cities. So um, yeah, that's, that's it, I guess. Um, me uh sure should, should i re respond to yeah maybe uh i want to respond to mario's um mario's uh question i think it's quite interesting to to compare how china like recovered the way of a, of a of a theater performance or cultural industry like how, how people behave in, in current china and how how far like uh, europe uh, can can recover that scenario. Um, I mean, I mean, I, maybe I didn't uh, be aware of the specific case that you mentioned, but you know, I, I noticed their restaurant and also gym and cinema like they recovered to like they reopened for welcoming people to to come back to to a normal life, but they keep distance as uh, still in a way like like a keep uh, for example they are their uh, gym, gym machine, and they, they have like a four or five machine between each other. And for the restaurant, they are also having crossing for, for example, in Singapore, they, they also mark the, the, the crossing for people to not sitting. 
and for the people to stand. I think it's the same uh, measurement has already been done in London tube. They mark the people how far two meter at least people can can stand. And uh, I think in a way like it welcome people to go back to the social norm, norm life. It's a way to 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 well, uh, re welcoming and uh, re re invite the people to come back to a social uh, like a normal life as it before. But as I mean, Sucrose and also Alida has already mentioned. I mean, maybe is is a matter of time when or like uh, somehow it recover back to that kind of life. But you know, in terms of the psychological kind of um, experience that we all kind of experience, all uh, endured, it's very difficult for, for current Chinese to take off all their masks and going back to their social, like a social life. Sometimes they, they even feel insecure without a mask when they go to meet people. You know, it's a different culture background maybe, but some European people, I mean, some European doesn't like to wear a mask, but when China, they, they are politically kind of, uh, they, they set up the policy, like if you don't wear a mask, you cannot go out. So after experience of uh, like a couple months, like such social distancing, uh, you are using PPE like a set to, to, to go engage back into public space. They still have, not only uh, recovered economically or physically, but also needs time to having a psychological kind of recovery back to engage in what no matter is a public space or urban space or social life. So we need, we need to give something to get something, at least. <laughs> so is it, it's, it's going to be a different experience for sure. Um, Marina, I have one question from Facebook. Uh, uh, Maria, can I answer the, for the previous question? Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it relates to what you asked as well. Um, Andronico's question, I think, really lies in the heart of, of the challenge, and, and it goes back to to this notion of of political. Uh, there are some people who separate the notion of politics and political, and and that's, I think, where the challenge is. So if, so I will give you an example of, of this uh, social distancing, like the, the political is when art, artistic practices contribute into the coexistence of multiple narratives and usually conflictual, and like the right to exist, despite the fact that we're not part of, of kind of the dominant narrative. And for change. However, if we talk about politics, when these people make this division, what they say is you just consolidate the kind of the new norms. And in this case, the new norms are the mask, are the, the, the social distancing. So the, the challenge there is if artistic practices consolidate these new norms or they disrupt them, by finding new formats for change. Therefore, and I go back to this, uh, to this risk of, uh, of technology, I don't think we should pretend that we can just re uh, repeat or copy what we've been doing in our physical life into the digital life. Uh, and the reason is that we should not do that is because that will may allow us to create new formats for change. Otherwise, we risk to continuously fall into a lot of uh, small obstacles. Like if I go to a theater, how, uh, how far is my kind of uh, fellow uh, audience member? Uh, therefore, the major debate that we need to discuss, and I think that's why I actually opened them, I asked uh, a ladder for the buffer fringes, and, and, and I think they offer this notion of process, which is, could be an interesting kind of take. So what is the means for disrupting 
these new norms. This is where art should be. And maybe that will go back to Andronico's question is, maybe that's the way to keep finding non-sterile sterile ways of, of dealing with this. Yes, precisely. And I think this was the mindset when we were discussing um, with Marina um, on our first uh, meetings uh, about um, the, the online exhibition Together Apart, on how, on how to also make, um, create an exhibition an, which, which is going to be an experience in itself and not replacing the physical, taking advantage of technology, not for the sake of technology, but also not for a kind of simulation of a physical uh, gallery or a physical exhibition. So uh, it, 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 was, it was very important to us to make this exhibition um, meaningful uh, for, for what it is and for how it exhibits itself and the artworks and how the, the um, um, and, and, and the opportunities that it gives to the artists to express themselves in new means, new mediums. Um, if, if, we don't, if we don't have any interventions from anyone, I can go to the question from Facebook. So it's by Sofia Anastasiu. Uh, very interesting discussion. Thank you. Just some thoughts. I wonder how the physical environment, public space specifically, will have to transform to accommodate and offer physical touch in some way. Creating objects, tools for interacting with the physical environment, it's already happening with masks and gloves. I also saw a keychain keychain tool that allows you to open doors without touching the handle. And that could extend to creating tools that allow us to have physical contact. And this thinking is also changing how we process any action in our life. There needs to always be something dividing us in some way, whether that's six feet or wearing a mask and gloves or the dividers, the screen protectors, uh, all the things that we are experiencing now, at, the, at least in London, we, we get them a lot at supermarkets and coffee shops that are now opening slowly. Um, so I, I think this adds to our, um, to our uh, discussions or worries of, of, of the changes to the experience. Of, of, of the public space and, and public art. I, I think uh, this, oh, okay. sorry. It's okay, I wait. Sure. I love it. <laughs> okay, uh, it's just gonna be a very brief comment because I think this ties in perfectly. I was thinking about how, um, uh, about the ethical side of using technology and how the fact that we have lost, the, the fact that we have lost touch with the kind of uh, the, the chain uh, that leads us to the creation of a tech tool is something that has also that it keeps us from being able to have like a real understanding of the ethical basis of the tools that we use. Um, uh, the the viewers comment about what happens when you kind of create your own tools. Okay, uh, we're probably not going to be able to all make an alternative to Zoom or Skype, but there if we can. Uh, yeah, work through craft, uh, through tool making to, to think about ways to increase contact. Um, and those are the, you know, the, the means of, um, of the creation and the manufacturing belong to us. Then maybe we can have a little bit more control over the ethical implications of the use of all these, of all these tools. It's something that I, it's been troubling me a lot and I, I have, I, I really don't know how to deal with it. Uh, it's always like this wall of, I can only go so far. I can only go up to the ship that will bring the computer to Limassol. So, I mean, it's very helpless. So thank you. That, that comment for me was a, 
a small opening, small window. Uh, I would like to just have a small like example for, for her question. I think it's a quite a good question. But um, because <laughs> currently in China, they, because the lift, you know, the button on lift, this is a people, is a button where it transmits the virus the most because everybody somehow press on the button. And uh, currently, I mean, the hologram like uh, technology is a way to solve such thing. Like you can press on it, but without touching the actual button. Mm. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's a way of, I mean, actually hologram is not, is not new. Uh, I mean, I, I also use uh, this, Techno, I mean, this thing for, for my production of work, but you know, in the future, it's, it's just my, my, my feeling. Maybe, I mean, in public space, you, 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 when you are engaging in somehow um, in a digital environment, you feel the sake of, of, of lacking of materiality or texture. I mean, the invention of that hologram to engage with those kind of texture or materiality is somehow quite essential for, for, for both, I mean, artists or designer. I remember I was intending the, another seminar for IPO, like a, a RCA, like a, the, so the IPO uh, chief CEO, and he discussed with Eliasson and also talking about how technology in somehow change our life and how the privacy or personal um, information can be protected in a way that both suit for each other. So yeah, I, I, this is just my <laughs> reflection on her question. Yeah. Can, can I add a, a few thoughts? I mean, just taking from, I mean, it, the question does take us really back to what I was saying in the beginning. and adding to this ethical dimension that Elara was talking about. Well, my, my question back to this question is, are we uh, kind of extending this uh, in-between kind of uh, era until we find the vaccine for the coronavirus uh, forever? Meaning, are we going to produce a whole new culture for this transition, transitory period, because the danger of this is that we, we enter inside uh, the trap of normalizing what I was calling before the state of exception. And, and why are we normalizing it? Because it's true, we need one more year for that, mm. for the vaccine. So one possibility is to stay home for one year and forget about creativity for a year. I mean, just exaggerating. Uh, we see how, and then we, we redistribute wealth because there are people who really are getting more poor because of this. But because, I mean, I, so that's like one extreme. The other extreme is to start designing uh, envelopes for, for not touching, in fact. So that's what we're doing. It's like an in-between, in agents and um, the first two I, I think is that goes back to what I was calling consolidating the new norms so of course there's going to be design that will do that but that's where do do we stand I mean, the first question that we have to ask ourselves where do we stand in this new kind of uh, uh, ethical kind of dimension I, I personally I'm not there and uh, uh, but going back to to this notion of uh, making sensible all these notions of uh, of not democratic uh, issues that happen, what is really interesting is that maybe the state of exception, as Mario said, could be for a very specific period only to address the sanitary crisis. But we see really well how they're used as laboratories for the post crisis. We see, I mean, in Cyprus, we see how the state now is getting very aggressive because they realize that people are tolerant to this. So suddenly we have a lot of side effects. Where, can, where do we stand 
as uh, cultural agents into this kind of behavior. So this is uh, my, where I'm confused, I may say, because I'm not, I know the question, I'm not sure about the answers. What were um, the first, sorry, um, I'm sorry, what were the first messages from today's ending of the lockdown in Cyprus? I mean, I, I, I've spoken with some friends and family in Cyprus and uh, they, they, I, I have friends who have actually booked for restaurants and pubs and it, it, it actually strikes me uh, how easy it is for some people, I'm not suggesting everybody, for some people to, ch to just turn a page and, um, and get back to normal. Or we know that uh, Thok, the State Theatre of Cyprus, has announced a summer program um, which is going to take place in open air theatres. Mm. Um, I don't know if you have uh, any information of how this is going to be achievable uh, and and what uh, what um, what uh, what uh, what experience you you we might get from there if if, if it's going to be a major test for all cultural activity in Cyprus, including Buffer uh, Fringe Festival. Um, I don't know, Marina, I wanted to say something. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, um, but um, um, I, I don't want to disrupt from your question, just to slightly go back into what Socrates was saying. Um, and, and just to say that it, I think it's a bit like uh, on, on, on your two scenarios, Socrati, I think also it's a bit like what, what this in-between state uh, in terms of extending it or not extending it. It's a bit like the Stockholm syn syndrome that there's um, depending on, and I mean, of course, people like Mario said, uh, um, immediately, immediately jump into the normality that they were used to because that's what we do as human beings is what what what's embedded in us and we go back to what how we feel safe but also i guess this in between space has created this new normality which uh, what i'm saying the stockholm syndrome that we like it so we ended up we end up liking it that we maybe we don't want to leave it behind so but in terms of um culture at, at least i mean I think it's great on one hand that um, cultural activities are resuming in one way or another um, in, in Cyprus. In, in, uh, but I, from what I've been hearing from, um, I, I, I was participating at another webinar the other day. And um, again, it was a, a, a peop, the, the panelists were from um, theater groups um, and um, cultural organizations in Europe. And they were saying that which I found quite, um, I guess, um, encouraging in a way or hopeful that they are exploring. So, for example, I, um, they were saying that uh, they're looking into public spaces that cannot be used or not, not public, like big spaces that they were set for. They, 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 had, they used to have um, a purpose that they cannot be used as much now uh, in, because of social distancing. So they're looking at how to repair for these spaces um, to create um, uh, performative events, um, which for me, that's the hopeful bit because you're not leaving a space to die and you're not leaving a space to go derelict. And you're also, you're not sitting still thinking of um, what's gonna happen next. You're finding new ways to, to create a performance that doesn't mean necessarily that you have to your audience will have to attend with PPE there might be a way that um, and, uh, they'll attend to that and thinking some again looking I think we we mustn't forget even if we're going forward we mustn't forget to what the practices that we have been using already so site specificity um, and promenade performances that's something that it can easily go forward and it can be done in a safe way. So it's just a thought. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to add um, anything and we have a couple of questions before we close, we, before we wrap up from the audience. Um, 
So I'll just read um, Panayotis Minas. Um, he was saying that the Sim Sims technology is already here and Instagram or TikTok reality is more viral than COVID. Uh, what we as artists realize is that this is not a new medium, but for, for me personally is already antiquated. Um, do you think it's more viable? So it's a more viable solution to start making or learn to make instead of exhibiting? Um, and then he's adding, and as a, an aftermath of the of that reclaim, any space left and reclaim it or offer it as the public says. So I guess it's what on what I was saying. Um, does anybody have um, anything to comment on on Panayotis's question? Uh, can I start from his second part, like and and what uh, you, Marina, have said, said about the reclaiming these spaces? I think the I mean, how, why should we reclaim spaces and what kind of spaces? Uh, one idea is to uh, allow the cultural production to go on. The other one is to go back to why public space, as I said in the beginning, mm -hmm. and, and see that there's a, there's a debate about uh, the need of such reclaiming of spaces that they are uh, spaces very close to boundaries and, and unfortunately there is an emergence of amazing amount of boundaries all over the world or any different size and 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 how to really focus cultural production within these uh, spaces in the cities where different kinds of people lift each other, but they have no connection. Uh, places where people have no access to culture. Therefore, in, instead of going back and lamenting the unuse of huge spaces, which are, I assume they are part of huge productions that are, uh, they have their own agenda, is to take and unveil spaces where pro culture production should have been before anyway, and it was not. So that's a kind of a, another way to go. And maybe that's an answer to, uh, to the second part. Now, how to use technology and if you learn, I mean, we, I mean, my point of view is that you, we're always behind technology. And however, this, we can make another discussion some other day of the definition of what is technology, because it's, it's a huge kind of uh, debate on that and the, and the access to it. Uh, I personally think, oh, you think? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think they, they already, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a method for, for making or, I, I think, I, I think like there, there are many cases because I'm an artist that I immediately just respond as an example for, for, for using Instagram or using those social media as a way to, to produce a new identity or produce a different way of, of, of making art. I think, is it, I, I think it's always an attitude that you choose what, what kind of, how you are engaged in, in any type type of new media or new uh, type of a, like kind of a social media or, or a technology. If you critically kind of use it as a way to, to reproduce your identity or you just immerse yourself in a way to entertain or waste time, it's always a, 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 a binary kind of a debate. But as an artist, uh, ha having a critical attitude towards any type of, uh, I mean, as a supernormal stimuli, which is uh, also my type, kind of, uh, uh, is one title of my PhD studies, which include like six type of uh, uh, stimuli, but uh, internet engagement or entertainment is one type of inter uh, like like a stimuli, like like a human is kind of. Uh, inherited from the ancient ancestors. Like you, if you critically reflect on the, on the engagement, 
for a lot kind of uh, uh, self or identity is always taking a more active way to, to engage in a new reality. So this is my <laughs> attitude too. So. Great. Well, we have uh, exceeded our time, but there is one last pressing question uh, because it raises a, a very important issue here. Um, and I think it will be the last question that we will take from our audience. And then um, we would like to have your uh, final um, uh, notes uh, and uh, then we can wrap up maybe. So from Michalis uh, Aristidou, uh, we might not have permission to physically touch or move into someone's personal space, but this is a great opportunity to reinvestigate the permission that we give to all bodies to take space. Working with students from different backgrounds, um, not everyone has been given the permission to take space because of their gender or ethnic background. Focusing on our current separation, how can art talk about that? Um, let me try to give this a shot. Uh, okay, so other than for me, the, the, um, uh, the very obvious that now all bodies, no matter, you know, if they are privileged, if they have access, if they are welcomed uh, into different uh, social settings or creative processes, uh, all bodies will now have the experience of, of uh, limited touch. So um, in, a, in terms of both the social interaction, but also of the creative, I think that that type of distance um, kind of gives us a little bit of, of room for thought. So yeah, I don't want to go <laughs> into, into that kind of the idea of the other role of desire and how that plays <laughs> in, into the interaction, uh, into the everyday interaction, also kind of in a very basic um, uh, human level uh, I'm not speaking about other things but um, yeah I, I think that now lack uh, will, will open uh, open new horizons and I think also in terms of art um, I think Mikhaili this will be uh, and in terms of artists and most performance artists I think this this period has taught uh, has taught them a lot because kind of also going back to Banayodis Nina's question, the fact that now they have acquired more tools, more online tools, that gives them also other, uh, other means of understanding uh, their limitations, but also their possibilities. And I think that will open up new avenues to artists because performance artists, and I'm part of that group, a little bit on the outside, we do tend to find great solace in our physicality. And it, can, it, can, it cannot be our only tool and now it, it, it just can't, you know, period. We're not in a period that, you know, our physicality can be our go-to place. So um, that's, that's it from me. Great. Thank you, Lala. Does anybody else have anything to add on that? So we're good to um, wrap up. Just to say a big thank you to everyone who was here with us today, the audience, but also the panelists and uh, their contributions um, to this discussion. Um, I think we've raised more questions, which, which is quite interesting, uh, rather than maybe answering questions. But I, I think, I guess that's also a way to go forward. Um, just to say that we'll be um, transcribing this discussion and, and, and we'll add it onto, the, onto our report of the exhibition. Um, I mean, a few key things that came up today, um, it was, um, I think it was that that binary of the public private space versus the comments that Socrates said, and uh, keeping that, keeping, um, I guess, uh, how um, art can uh, allow us, allow us to reimagine, reimagine these spaces, um, even if it's e either if it's uh, via physical um, way or um, by critically using, as Chang said, uh, technology and creating creating new ways, new realities um, 
in, in, in a way. But also, I, I suppose this challenge of physicality, I find it, I find it really interesting. And I think I, I really stand on what Elada said um, now, um, and the, her last point, that you have, um, I guess it's, it's a new challenge to discover new ways of being physical, but also discover new tools of expressing, expressing yourself and opening, opening up to the public and engaging with the public, which is really interesting in terms of public art. But also, um, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't know if Marios has anything else to add. Just to the last point that um, taking on from Michali's uh, comment and a lot of um, uh, thoughts on that, it's, it's, it's maybe a good, period to reflect on our own prerogatives, on our own privileges, uh, and, and, and think about uh, those groups of people. Either these are artists, which we know that it, was, it has been a very difficult period for them on so many <laughs> various levels. Uh, both artistically and in terms of, of, of their living conditions, um, but also people that are uh, that belong to more disadvantaged groups. Um, so maybe this is a way to to perhaps uh, uh, rethink at least uh, uh, those of us who who, who are who are in some positions that we can encourage other people on board to, to help fight the, this, uh, the, the, these social injustices and, and, and uh, imagine new, new places to go. Uh, <laughs> um, so thank you everyone, guys. Thank you very much for, uh, con for your contributions. Many thanks to the audience, both here on Zoom and on Facebook. Um, the, uh, our chat, our um, conversation uh, was recorded and will be uh, available online on the exhibition site. Uh, and uh, the exhibition will be up on um, culturacchc.co.uk slash together apart until the end of June. And after that, Marina and I will prepare some kind of documentation to, to uh, which will include um, uh, notes on this beautiful discussion that we had today. And uh, it's, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank All right, you, take everyone. care. You too. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.